I might be a little late to the party, but Swagger was officially removed as the default OpenAPI package starting from .NET 9. In this video, I want to explore the new OpenAPI package, a couple of UI alternatives, and how to integrate this with .NET Aspire. I scaffolded a new .NET Aspire starter package, which includes an API service and a Blazor client. Of course, this is all using .NET 9 and I didn't even bother with removing the default comments. So now we have a new service call, a service registration, called Add Open API. And there's also a new middleware called Map Open API, which exposes a new API endpoint. Previously, this is where you would configure Swagger. So what does this look like and where is it coming from? There is a new NuGet package called Microsoft ASP.NET Core Open API. And this is what's responsible for creating the Open API document. So let me start the application. And this is going to spin up the Aspire dashboard. Now I want to navigate to the API service route. And if I head over to openapi slash version one dot JSON, I can see the Open API JSON document for my API. Now, obviously it only contains one endpoint, the default weather forecast endpoint, and the description for the weather forecast response schema. So we do have an open API document, but we no longer have a user interface. So what can you do about it? Well, why not just go ahead and install Swagger? We can search for some NuGet packages, and if I look for Swagger, I can install the Swagger UI NuGet package. Let's go ahead and install that. Now, other than Swagger, what are some possible alternatives? There is the Redoc package, which is also going to give you um, an interesting user interface that you can use for documenting your API. And I'm also going to explore the popular choice called Scalar. So let's go ahead and install the Scalar ASP.NET Core NuGet package. So with these three NuGet packages installed, how do we actually use them? Here's the code for configuring the Swagger UI. There's the familiar use Swagger UI call, and we just have to configure the Swagger UI options by giving it the endpoint, the route, to the open API document. You can configure Redoc in a similar fashion. You call use Redoc to configure the middleware, and you also specify the URL to the open API document. And then when it comes to Scalar, this is the simplest of them all. You just call map scalar API reference. So this one is kind of aligned with the map open API call. So now we have three different open API user interfaces configured inside our application with just a few method calls. Let's start the application again and explore what they look like. If I navigate to the Swagger route, you'll be greeted by the familiar Swagger user interface. Here you can see the one API endpoint that we have and we can send a request to test out our API. So this is just bringing back the old behavior using our new open API document. Now there's also Redoc, which acts more as documentation for your API. And you can see our API service and the one weather forecast endpoint that we have along with the response schema. So nothing too interesting here, but you can obviously customize this further. And then there is the scalar user interface, which is kind of similar to what we had in the Swagger UI, except it offers some additional functionality. So you can see our API endpoint the possible responses. It also gives you a curl request if you want to test this out, but there are also commands for other languages. For example, I can navigate to C Sharp and take a look at the HTTP client example, and I can even copy the code to test this out on my client. There's also documentation for the model that I have, which is the weather forecast type with a couple of fields that it has. So you can see how all of these choices all revolve around the same idea. The essence is having the open API document, and then this document is used to render a user interface. Now, what I want to show you is a simple way how you can integrate all of these open API UIs with your API service resource in .NET Aspire. What I want to do is customize the API service resource. And Aspire has an interesting entry point for customization. You can define custom commands on your resources. So let me define a command. Let's call it the Swagger UI docs. Then I can give this command a display name. Let's call it Swagger UI documentation. And then I need to define the actual code for the command. Now this is going to be an async method. So let's define the body. And what do I need to do inside? I need to return a new execute command result. And in the happy path, this is going to have true in the success property. But what do we actually want to do? I want to obtain a URL 
for my API, and I can do that by accessing the API service. But in order to be able to use it, I need to reference it as a variable. So I'll first store the variable, and then I will call the with command method. On the API service, because this is a resource, I can call the get endpoint method, and this is going to resolve the HTTP or HTTPS endpoint for this resource, giving me back the URL. But I will actually rename this to endpoint to better describe that this is the base URI or base URL for our API. Now the actual URL is going to contain the base endpoint and then the specific part for the Swagger UI, which is just Swagger. And then how do we access this URL? I can access the process class and for example, call the start method. I can initialize the process start info type, pass in the URL, and I'm also going to say use shell execute as true. And this is actually going to open up a new tab in the browser pointing to the Swagger UI. Now, what if we get an exception here? I can say try catch, and in case of an exception, I can return a new execute command result, specify that success is false, and for example, for the error message, I can say, just give me back the exception as a string. Now, if I wanted to make this reusable, I could turn these arguments into variables. So let's introduce a variable and let's call it the name. And then I'm going to add a variable for the description, which is actually called the display name. And then for the prefix here, I can add a variable called open API UI path. And then let's define this variable and the value is just going to be swagger. So far, so good. Now, there are a couple of arguments that we can pass to the with command method. For the update state argument, we need to provide a function, which is going to be a callback that's going to define the button state in the swagger UI. So I can say context, and if the context resource snapshot, and we access the health status, and let's say if the resource is healthy, then we can return the resource command state of enabled, Otherwise, we're going to return the resource command state of disabled. And then you can also customize the icon name. Let's say I want to use a document and I can also define the icon variant as icon variant field. So this is how I can define a custom command on my Aspire resource. Now let me show you what this looks like. As the Aspire services are spinning up, if I click the three dots on my API service resource, I can now see a new command. It's called Swagger UI documentation. If I click this button, I'm going to get an error. And this is because I made a mistake on purpose. Or did I? Anyhow, you can see what the error response looks like. And the mistake I made in the code is not accessing the endpoint URL when defining the path for my command. Now, if I restart this and I click on the Swagger UI documentation command, it's correctly going to take me to the Swagger UI interface. And the good part is that we made our command definition reusable. So now I can define an extension method in my Aspire project. Let's call this the resource builder extensions. And I'll make this an internal and static class. And I need an extension method on my resource builder. So let's make this private static i resource builder. I'll make it generic. Let's call it with open API docs. It's going to be a generic method on the i resource builder type. Now I also need to define a generic constraint and let's say that T is an I resource with endpoints. And this will allow me to call the get endpoint method. So what do I want to do inside? I want to copy this call here to define the command and let's return builder and then let's call our command. We'll import the missing types and then we need to fill in a few blanks. Instead of referencing the API service, I can access the builder and I'll be able to call the get endpoint method because my generic argument is a resource that has endpoints. This is important. The second thing is adding a few additional arguments. So I'll need a name and a display name, and I'll also need the open API UI path. So this is my method definition. Now I'll create a couple of more extension methods, and let me copy what I have here. And instead of with open API docs, let's call this with Swagger UI. Then I also need to add my generic constraint and I should be able to say builder with open API docs and specify the arguments. So the name is going to be Swagger UI docs. 
The display name is going to be Swagger API documentation and my path is going to be just Swagger. And now I'm going to copy this two more times and let's update this for the scalar UI. Let's call it the scalar docs as the unique name. And then the command name is going to be scalar API documentation and the route is going to be scalar slash version one. And let's do the same for redoc. We're going to call this the redoc docs, the redoc API documentation, and the route is going to be API docs. So now I can go back to my aspire definition, get rid of all of this, and I can just say with Swagger UI, with Scalar, and with Redoc, and start my Aspire application. And now when I check out the allowed actions for the API service, I can access the Swagger UI, I can also access the Scalar UI, and I can also access the Redoc API documentation. So this is how you can easily extend .NET Aspire with custom commands to define your API docs. And I realize now, after recording the entire video, that you probably weren't able to see the custom commands because they were behind my face. So here they are. This is what the commands look like. They're just rendered with the icon that you choose and the display name that you pick. So that's all there is to it. And these are the couple of open API UI options that you have in .NET 9. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash the like button right below for the YouTube algorithm. If you want to learn more, then check out this video next. Also check out my courses to improve your software architecture and .NET skills. I'm going to leave the links to them in the pinned comment down below. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, stay awesome.